Welcome to The Wrong Cat Died, the podcast breakdown of the cat's catastrophe. I'm your host, Mike Abrams, and today we're covering the fat cat. And no, I'm not talking about the jazz club in the West Village. I'm talking about the 25-pounder himself, Bustopher Jones. Cue the intro music. There's a cat over here. There's a cat over there. And the wrong one died. And the wrong one died. Welcome to The Wrong Cat Died, the podcast breakdown of the cat's catastrophe. Today, let's cover the fat cat Buster for Jones. So far, I've nicknamed every other cat, and I really wanted to nickname him throughout this episode, and I wanted to call him Buster for Rhymes. But we know Andrew Lloyd Webber doesn't believe in rhyming, so let's stick with Buster for from here on out. There's a lot to unpack with Buster for, and let's just say that I learned a lot more about British history than I ever needed to know. But let's start with the obvious. Buster for is fat. And he is fat shamed from the minute he steps on stage. He's so fat that in the UK production, they had him walk around with a giant silver spoon for the entire show. It was like his fat kid pimp cane keeping all his kittens in line. His song almost exclusively focuses on his corpulence. Let's just look at a few of the lyrics. He's not skin and bones. He's remarkably fat. Lunched at the tomb on cabbage, rice pudding, and mutton. He has grown unmistakably round. He's a 25 pounder and he's putting on weight every day. But despite his obesity, the other cats seem very joyous and happy to know him. He's clearly a smart cat, and he lives his life to the fullest, which is probably why everyone enjoys being around him. What's unfortunate is you really only see Bustopher during his song. In most casts, the actor who played Bustopher is usually also playing Gus as well. His stage time is insanely short, but the song is actually really great. It gets stuck in your head a lot. And let's be honest, this should be where I stopped a section. All you should need to know about Bustopher is that he's fat, He's rich, and he's jolly. But that's not it. And because I need to dig deeper, I got to talk to you about a few interesting quirks I learned about Bustopher in his song. And there's three I want to cover, and God bless the third one. First, it's noted that Bustopher is a parody of the Edwardian era of British history. I'm sure all of you, just like me, knew exactly what the Edwardian period is. I actually had no idea, and I don't expect any of the listeners to, but really it's the very, very, very short reign of King Edward VII, who only ruled the empire for nine years. The best way I could describe the Edwardian era is to say that it's like a great Gatsby party. It's the romantic golden age of long summer afternoons and garden parties where the sun never sets on the British empire, which really makes Bustopher an extreme throwback to this period. Second, Bustopher is described as the Brummel of cats. I don't know if you know who Beau Brummel is, but Beau Brummel is the founder of dandyism. Brummel is still associated today with style and good looks. It's the iconic figure of fashion from the British olden days. The song has a ton of references to Bustopher's fashion, and it's highlighted that he wears white. So I'm not a fashionista. I don't know anything about fashion, but I believe Bustopher is not allowed to perform on stage after Labor Day. And this last anecdote is by far my favorite. Bustopher's song names three places by name, Drones, Blimps, and The Tomb. And you'll notice all of these establishments are gentlemen's clubs. Yes, you heard that right. They are gentlemen's clubs. And before we dig deeper on this topic, and yes, we are going to be digging deeper on this topic, I want to remind everyone that parents bring their children to see this show. Seriously, why do parents bring kids to see this show? Why, mom, did you bring my sister at a young age to see this show? In the first four episodes alone of this podcast, I've covered rumored adultery. I've covered rumored incest. I've covered a cockroach tap dance. I've covered a gyrating hip thrust of a rock star. And now I have cats attending strip clubs. Seriously, parents, please stop bringing children to this show. I'm begging you. But back to Busta for making it rain catnip on all these kittens in the gentlemen's club. All these locations are fictional, but the Drones Club is widely known from the PG Wode House stories about, wait for it, the Edwardian period. So at least Andrew Lloyd Webber tied a couple things together. It plays off a stereotype of the non-working rich male going to strip club, and the stories have incredible character names like Tubby, Biscuits, and Stinker. Again, I learned way more than I ever needed to know about this time in British history, and I'm hoping that one day it inevitably plays off in some trivia I do in the West Village. And I was planning on ending this section by listing off better fictional cat strip club names, but I've generally tried to keep this podcast family-friendly-ish. Plus, The idea of an obese musical cat spending all of his time at a cat strip club makes me feel such a whirlwind of different emotions that I just want to move on. And I think you do too. If you really want to know my top fictional cat strip club names, most of you know how to get a hold of me. So 
So how does Bustopher Jones' song differ from the poem? It doesn't. It is word for word the same as the book. If anything, they add a quick quirk at the end of the song by having Bustopher sing Toodle Pip, which sounds like Adam Sandler doing a Billy Madison voice. Let's dig into some real and fictional characters for Bustopher Jones. Let's start with the real people, because Bustopher reminds me of two greats who died too young. The first is Chris Farley. Chris Farley is one of the most brilliant comedians of the modern era, and he was admired by everyone. He lived his life to the fullest, maybe a little too full, and was jolly as they come. Plus, I can totally imagine Chris Farley walking around an SNL set with a giant spoon and absolutely no explanation. Can you imagine how good Chris Farley would have been in this movie? James Corden will be great, but Farley would have been amazing. The second is Notorious B.I.G. Biggie Smalls was corpulent and admired. His name literally has Biggie in it. He definitely entered a gentleman's club or two in his lifetime. Plus, can you imagine Bustopher strutting around the strip club with his giant pimp spoon going, I love it when you call me Big Papa. Throw your paws in the air if he's a true player. For the third one, Bustopher reminds me of Winston Churchill. I think it's just a look. Bustopher looks like a weird cat parody of Winston Churchill, and the black suits and the cane and everything about it just kind of lines up. Plus, the show is British, and so having the Prime Minister of the UK is definitely fitting. On top of that, the thought of Winston Churchill spending most of his time at a strip club is just kind of funny to think about. What about one fictional character? How about Bluto from Animal House? Bluto's the life of the party and famously street smart. I say that because we all know he's not book smart. He gives off the I don't give a shit vibe, and he doesn't mind failing out of college. He's also a slightly underutilized character in Animal House, which is a little bit of how I feel with Bustopher in the Cats musical. And last but not least, Bustopher reminds me of Mike Jones. Who? Mike Jones. Who? Mike Jones. If you didn't get that joke, you probably don't remember 2005. Mike Jones is a rapper that had 15 minutes of fame because he rapped his phone number in his song. Either way, Bustopher and Mike share the exact same last name. They sing a lot about visiting gentlemen's clubs. Plus, Mike Jones' song could easily be converted to be part of this new Cats movie. And we know Andrew Lloyd Webber loves changing great characters into rappers. Seriously, why do you change Rum Tug Tucker? I still can't get over that. But this just fits perfectly. Imagine, Bustopher steps up on stage with his giant pimp spoon in hand and goes, Back then, cats didn't want me. Now I'm hot. Cats all up on me. 281-330-8004. Hit Bustopher Jones up on the low because Bustopher Jones is about to blow. Okay, I can convert one more Mike Jones lyric. Before the ice was on my grill, before I got my major deal, these cats wouldn't give a damn if I was shit. Yeah. When Lemon Well decides to turn cats into a hip hop musical like Hamilton, please use this as my audition tape. Welcome to the Internet Rumor Mill, one of my favorite parts of every episode. For a cat that frequents the strip clubs, Bustopher's Rumor Mill is actually pretty standard stuff, but let's dive in. The first is his astrology sign. He's a Sagittarius. Do all Sagittarius cats frequent strip clubs? I don't know. I don't want to know. Let's move on. Next, Bustopher has a complex family tree. He's Alonzo's uncle. I don't know who Alonzo is. I don't think he's really involved in the show at all. But they say he's a scrappy alley cat, and because of that, Bustopher shuns him throughout the show. He's also Mr. Mistopheles' uncle, and he loves that nephew. He's super proud of him. And it's rumored that Victoria might also be either his daughter or his niece, which again, I'm not sure how that's going to work. I'm not sure if this is like an Alabama version of cats. It shouldn't be too shocking that for a fat, jolly cat who frequents strip clubs, he has a few rumored affairs. Bustopher is tied to Jenny Anydots and Jelly Lorem. And the last rumor is not actually a rumor, but it's a part that I want to tie together. So the last rumor is that Bustopher Jones and Grizabella are friends growing up, and they grew apart when Grizabella was kicked out of the tribe. Bustopher was too important for her to talk to, and because of that, it put Bustopher in a lot of pain. Here's where I want to take a minute, though. I want to combine these last two rumors a little bit. Because if you combine this rumor and the last rumor, you get a really interesting friendship triangle. So here's my take on how this goes. Bustopher and Grizabella are friends growing up, and so was Grizabella and Jelly. Jelly ends up giving her chance to sing to allow Grizabella the chance to sing in what's one of the most selfless acts during the play. But Jelly also sleeps with Bustopher, who had a falling out with Grizabella. Are these two things related? Did Grizabella get kicked out of the tribe, but avoided Bustopher, not because he was important, but because he slept with her friend? And then Jelly felt so bad about sleeping with her best friend that she gives up her chance to perform as a way of saying she's sorry. These are the types of questions that I want answers from from Andrew Lloyd Webber. Well, that and why on earth he would change Rum Tug Tugger into a rapping street cat at night. Favorite YouTube comments. 
For as fat as Bustopher Jones is, his YouTube comments are actually pretty slim. Here are my four favorite. Devoted Katessian. Then, in fact, he's remarkably fat. Now, in fact, he's remarkably thick. Lorian Damon. Also, a fat cat is probably quite unusual for the Jellicles. They're alley cats. Food wouldn't come quite consistently, even for the magical Mr. Misopheles. And I really want to find out, Lorian, why are you digging so deep? Nico Pink. Bustopher. Damn. I want to cuddle that potato cat. Cat Defender. This musical predicted the fat except its movement. So why does Bustopher Jones deserve to die over Grizabella? Well, it's 2019, and we've made a lot of progress for equality, but a rich, fat, white guy is still doing all right. The overfed, rich cat strutting his stuff with a giant pimp spoon still deserves some form of consideration for the heaviside layer, despite his promiscuous gentleman's club hobby. Quick counter, as amazing as Bustopher Jones is, it seems hard to reward a cat who's only in the show for one song and sings the entire thing about stuffing his face with food while flinging dollar bills on kittens. We shouldn't be rewarding this behavior. So how do we rate Bustopher Jones? On a scale of one to nine cat lives, I give him three and a half cats. One cat for every strip club he frequents and an extra half cat for the cat visual of him getting a lap dance from the Taylor Swift kitten. Thanks for listening to episode four about Bustopher Jones on The Wrong Cat Died, the podcast breakdown of the cat's catastrophe. To follow along, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or anywhere else you listen to podcasts. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at The Wrong Cat Died, or check out our website, theroncatdied.com.